Well, hey, family of grace, welcome. My name is Pastor Chris. I'm the online campus pastor here at Grace Central Coast. We are a gospel-centered multi-campus church on the central coast of California, and we are all about helping people find and follow Jesus. If you are worshiping on YouTube this morning, uh, either because you're used to YouTube or maybe uh, because you switched over because of a couple of technical errors on church online platform, uh, we are working through and I think have worked through uh, most of our glitches. And so uh, head on back over to gracecentralcoast.org uh, slash watch to join us uh, for our online campus through church online platform. That's a place where we can um, worship together in the comments, and also you can ask for prayer um, from one of our hosts, etc. So I encourage you to go over there. Even if you are watching on YouTube, you can open that on your phone and you can join the chat there to worship. If you're new here, welcome. You can click the I'm new button in the chat right now, or you can go to graceintercoast.org and there's an I'm new button there. I would love to know that you are here and get to worship with you. Again, so uh, let's kick our time off together today by reading from Psalm 73 as we prepare our hearts for a posture of worship of our Lord. Let's read together. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let's give that to the Lord this morning together in song. Remember, the miracles still won't come you the answer. Aside from the tears we cry are the answer. Your cross is still enough. We hold tight to the promise of new life. Our hope in Jesus Christ will never fail or fall. Seas like and momentary trial are gaining us.
wisdom in now my true sing a song. Uh, There's actually a Christmas song. We didn't get a chance to sing it here online together this season, but I thought it was so fitting as we enter uh, into the new year. So let's sing this song together. We sang it a lot last year. If you don't know the words, follow along. the front. 
together as we worship together as a community today there's hope for everyone we believe that hope is in your son we hold on to you and your promises through light and momentary trials amen well hey we're going to continue worshiping through a time of giving back now if you're new to grace we're not asking you to give if you call grace intro coast your home this is just another way that we worship together every week you can do that in a few different ways during the season and those are going to be on the screen right now while we take a minute to do that, I want to uh, tell you all a couple stories about how your giving back is helping people find and follow Jesus, not just here on the Central Coast, but really all over the world. Um, you all have been giving uh, in a unique and brand new way over the last few weeks, and oh my gosh, the impact is huge. I've already heard so many stories. My inbox is flooded to the point where I can't even find other work-related emails. I am just seeing story after story of how your giving back in this season is helping people find and follow Jesus. And I love that problem. I love not being able to find my email because of that. Uh, I want to tell you a few of those stories right now. Um, we gave every adult in our congregation a $100 bill and said, go find a need and meet that need. And uh, I am just blown away at how uh, diverse and really the variety of ways that you all uh, found a way to love on some people. Here's some stories. One, uh, there was someone in our church who bought a bunch of blankets and uh, put notes in them uh, with scripture and other encouraging words and gave them to uh, some of the homeless people in our community. That was one of many stories that I heard about people loving on our homeless community here in San Luis Obispo, and my heart was so warmed by that. I loved reading all of those stories. Another family, there was a family in our Grace who, uh, in our Grace family, who pooled their money together uh, with another family um, to have a $400 gift, and they both gave it to a friend of theirs whose 19-year-old daughter is battling cancer. Uh, they said, uh, we know it's not going to cover everything, um, but oh my gosh, that family that received it um, was so overjoyed and really anything helps. In that same vein, there was a family who decided to donate their $200 to an organization that uh, buys ukuleles for uh, children that are battling cancer, and they gave it to the organization. That organization matched that giving, so on Christmas morning, uh, 40 children in the hospital opened brand new uh, ukuleles, and I thought that was so awesome personally. This one was really interesting. Someone uh, was planning on going on a uh, missionary veterinarian's trip, uh, but was unable to go because of COVID. And so they gave their $100 to that organization and check out how far their $100 went. Their $100 bought four chickens and two turkeys for families in an impoverished area, um, paid for vaccines and spay for a village dog in a certain area. Um, and then also on top of that, uh, helped fund missionary work for missionaries on the field 
doing that work out there. I thought that was so interesting and what a cool way to give. Uh, and last one for today, uh, there's a a person in our congregation who is in law enforcement and uh, they split their $100 gift into 10 different gift cards, $10 gift cards. And then uh, as throughout the week, when they pulled people over for minor traffic infractions, uh, they gave out a gift card instead of a ticket. I thought that was so sweet and what a unique way to show the love of Christ in our community. Those are just a few stories of so many. And with some of those stories, we heard the impact from the giving initially, right away. We heard about the blessing um, of hearing the people that were so overwhelmed and in tears receiving a gift uh, from the Lord without expecting anything from return. And there are so many stories where we may not hear um, of the outcome. We may not hear immediately what God is doing. Uh, But we know that God is working. We see God working already. And uh, we thank you so much for the way that you have so generously and extravagantly given during this season. So right now, let's take a minute. Let's pray over those $100 bills. Uh, Let's pray over those gifts and the people who they are impacting now. God, uh, we already have and we continue to give you um, these $100 bills. But more than that, we just give you ourselves. We give you our um, what we have, what we're really, really stewarding for you. Um, I pray that you continue to urge us to be, to be generous in the same way that we were in this past season, to continue loving on those around us and making a genuine and sincere impact uh, and practical impact in the world around us. I pray over the people that have received gifts and are still receiving gifts, God. I pray that you would draw them close to you, that you would show them uh, this is the, the tip of the iceberg with your generosity, Lord. If they received a gift card or a blanket uh, or even a $100 bill in a white envelope, Lord, I pray that you would continue to show them that your generosity is endless. It is bottomless in giving your son for them in love. And so pray that you continue to move and thank you, Lord, for using us in that. Amen. Well, right now, I encourage you to grab your Bible, either your phone or a physical Bible, or uh, you can open that up in the notes section as well uh, on our website, and uh, open to Psalm chapter 42. And I'm going to grab a Bible right now and give you a second to get there. Again, we're going to read from Psalm chapter 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. From the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar, Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All of your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to my God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the deadly wounds in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, online campus, Ben Collins, Five Cities Campus Pastor, glad to be able to be with you today and open God's word here in 2021. Thanks for engaging in the chat and for faithfully pursuing the Lord in these very strange times that we're in. This morning, we find ourselves, as I said, in a new year. How are you feeling about that? I got some Christmas cards this year that said, good riddance 2020, happy new year. Are you ready to say happy new year? I'm not sure I am. I'm still recovering from 2020. I'm still processing 2020. 
I haven't made a bunch of New Year's resolutions, and if I did, they'd all have a nice big asterisk attached to them, saying, I'm not so sure this is actually going to happen. How about you? How are you approaching 2021? Whether or not 2020 has been incredibly hard and challenging for you, or if it's mainly been different but manageable for you, all of us have a new normal that includes an increased level of uncertainty. All of us have made adjustments to our rhythms or changed or canceled plans in 2020. For you all, you're worshiping online. Did you see that coming a year ago? I don't think, I don't think we did. I don't think we saw it coming. So with uncertainty in our new normal, can we really say happy new year? Maybe not. But what can we say? What do we need as we approach 2021? One answer to that question is that we need Christian hope. Maybe we can't say happy new year, but hopefully we'll be able to say hopeful new year. This morning, we're going to look at Psalm 42, which Pastor Chris just read so well. And we're going to reflect on how our souls were cast down in 2020. And then we're going to turn to consider two counterfeit hopes. And then finally, we're going to arrive and marvel at Christian hope. And that Christian hope that we've been given through the gospel. So let's begin where I think if we're honest, many of us would rather avoid being at all, which is reflecting on how our souls were cast down in 2020. So here's my question. How was your soul cast down in 2020? I'm getting those, that cast down language from verse five and verse 11 of chapter 42, but it also occurs in the next couple of chapters as well. So what does it mean for your soul to be cast down? I think that's a great question. That, that verb, cast down, only occurs here in Psalm 42, 43, and 44. And in each place, they really refer to a soul being cast down. So a soul that is cast down must be related to that sense of turmoil that's there. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? That's, we see that paired each time in these phrases in the Psalms. And then we also see that the solution to a soul being cast down is hoping in God. Because, once again, we will praise God. So the picture we get here is a person who has lost hope. Who has entered into despair. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. You're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You're lost at sea. As Dante inscribed upon the gates of hell in his inferno. Abandon all hope, he says, ye who enter here. See, to have your soul cast down is to really be tasting hell. I think Dante's right. It's an abandonment of hope. To have your soul cast down is to have a life that is death-like. It's anti-life-like. Second, how can a soul be cast down? How can a soul lose hope? What does this actually mean? What does it look like? Well, the short answer is that this can happen in all kinds of ways and at all kinds of times. And by just looking at Psalm 42, I want to just point out four different ways that the psalmist's soul was cast down. And I want to invite us really to think and consider, has our soul been cast down in those ways as well? And after we've grasped how our souls have been cast down or how they might be cast down in the future, we'll then be able to look at the kinds of hope that we can turn to when that happens. So as we walk through these four different ways that the psalmist's soul was cast down, I'm going to give you a chance really to just sit and reflect and record if your soul was cast down in a similar way. So this remembering and recording and like thinking through 2020 might be kind of painful. It's probably something that you weren't really wanting to do today, (laughs) but I, I invite you to do so because unless we really go back and address these things in our lives, then we're going to be controlled by them in ways that we don't want. And so if you look, for instance, forward at 2021 with some fear and trepidation at making plans, that's likely because you haven't really dealt with the outcomes and the pain of all the 
plans that have been canceled in 2020. And so this is just an, it's an opportunity. It's really just a beginning. You're not going to have enough time here this morning to do this. But I do encourage you to, to take some time to really think, how has my soul been cast down in 2020? So here are the four ways. The first is, has your soul been cast down emotionally? The psalmist says this in verse 3, my tears, my tears have been my food day and night. Me personally, I've never cried more than I did in 2020. How about you? What has brought you to tears this year? What have you lost? What's been taken away from you? How have you been cast down? How has your soul been cast down emotionally in 2020? Let's take a moment and think that through. Second way. Has your soul been cast down verbally? Look at this, verse 3, and then also verse 11. He's, the psalmist is saying, They say to me all the day long, Where is your God? So there's this verbal, there's, in verse 11 it says, My adversaries, they taunt me. So verbally, what have you heard in your, in your mind? What has come into your, in through your ears and into, enter into your heart and come down and caused your soul to sink, to be cast down? I'll say that I've been wounded and I have wounded others verbally this year in ways that I am not proud of at all. And this also reminds me as the psalmist is thinking about these people who are saying to him, to him where is your God? I think about Satan, our great accuser, and his unceasing accusations, him bringing doubts into our minds, placing them there, causing us to really question the goodness of our God and the presence of our God. Does God know? Does he care what I'm going through? How have you had your soul been, been verbally cast down in 2020? Take a moment to think about that as well. What have you heard? What have you been tempted to believe? What has been said of you that might be true that's really been harsh to hear? Has your soul, third, has your soul been cast down physically? There's this word in verse 7. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. You know, in the, in the wintertime here on the Central Coast, I love going out to Morro Bay when the swell is huge. And it was that way a few weeks ago, and my, my family and I, we, I took my kids out there, and it's just awesome to watch that breakwater get smashed by these huge waves. It's awesome to watch the breakwater get smashed by those huge waves. But have you been smashed by some huge waves this, this year? Have you been sick? Have you been stressed? Have you been anxious? Have you had sleepless nights? Have you had exhaustion? You know, we also talk like, it's common for us to talk about waves of emotion. Man, I, I have said this year, I didn't know that these waves could get so big. I didn't know that they could be so powerful. I didn't know that physically I could feel so overwhelmed, undone, tumbled by these breakers, this physical pain that stress in your body. Has your soul been cast down physically this year? Take a moment to think. Fourth and finally, relationally. Has your soul been cast down relationally this year? Verse 9. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? God, why have you forgotten me? Have you felt forgotten by God? Have you felt like your relationships have been strained to, to a, a degree where they don't really even exist anymore? Have you had relational difficulties? Have you felt like you've been or have you actually been forgotten by others? Have you felt alone in this season? Have you had friendships that have been broken in this season for whatever reason? What kind of relational struggle have you endured? Has that cast down your soul in 2020? 
There are certainly more ways for our souls to be cast down than these four. But if you're willing, I want to give you an opportunity to just, if you're sitting next to someone here online, you just, just to share with that person which of those four ways stood out to you as a way that your soul was really cast down in 2020. And if, if you're watching alone, I'm so glad you are, then I would just encourage you to reach out to someone who you know was either watching online or attending a live service and just share with them. Hey, you know, this is how my soul was really cast down in 2020. That's a brave, vulnerable, courageous, and I can make the argument, but I'm not going to do it here. It's a very necessary thing for us to do. We need to go through this life together. So I encourage you to share. As we've already mentioned, we know the solution for a cast down soul. We know what it is. The solution is hope, but not just any kind of hope. It's hope in God. Yet in reality, when we are faced with trouble, with pain, with uncertainty and loss, we can, and we do, I do, turn to counterfeit hopes as well. So we're going to talk about two counterfeit hopes today. And when we are cast down, we look for strength to get back up. We can either look for that strength within ourselves or within a higher power. The first is a self hope or a self-reliance. The second is religious hope or religious reliance. Both self-hope and religious hope represent actual worldviews. This is a way that you can actually live your life fully and completely apart from the Christian life. Self-hope corresponds to a materialistic universe where the most powerful will is found in humanity. Religious hope, on the other hand, corresponds to a deistic universe where the most powerful will is found in a creator God or a pantheon of gods, a whole bunch of gods. However, both self and religious hope can also be paths that Christians like myself and like yourself, if you're a follower of Christ today, seek to take out of their despair. We seek out self-hope and religious hope as a way out of our despair. When we're cast down, we look for both. I know I've tried both out myself. And so let's begin by talking about the first counterfeit hope, self-hope. The psalmist actually acknowledges the path of self-hope and yet sees it as a dead end. And as I said before, Psalm 42, 43, and 44 kind of hang together because there's this repeated refrain, why are you cast down on my soul? So in Psalm 44, verse 6 and 7, the psalmist says this, For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me, But you have saved us, O God, from our foes. And so, James 4 is a passage that also discourages self-hope. And it says this, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town, spend a year there, trade, and make a profit. Yet, James says, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. James points out that we are not in control of tomorrow. We don't know what 2021 will bring. We didn't know a year ago what 2020 would bring. We didn't know. And yet, the reality is, I like self-hope. I see it working in the short run. I work hard. I get smart. I maneuver. I leverage the people and the resources around me to get what I want. Maneuver and leverage are nice words for manipulate and coerce. Okay, But that's, that's a way that I see self-hope w- working in my life, that I can get what I want if I try hard enough, if I, if I maneuver just right, I can get this done. And or I could also be in despair and I look within myself and I look around me for things, for experiences and for people that I can use to lift myself up. I might seek out a relationship, seek out a vacation, seek out a grand and noble purpose to commit my life to. I might seek out a person in need or a new discipline or diet. Those are all things I've done. I've done done all those. In a place of feeling cast down, I have looked for solutions in those ways. Looked for it in another person. Looked for it in a great purpose. Looked for someone in need. All these different things. Not that those don't have any value in themselves, but if you put the expectation on those things that they will solve Your soul being cast down, that is a fool's errand. That is a path that's going to be a dead end. This self-hope path that we can be on 
leads to a summit that is short of satisfaction. As I've walked it, I've always wanted more. And in the back of my mind, I've always had a low level anxiety that it could be taken away in a moment. That vacation could go really poorly. Been there, done that. I've had the flu for half a vacation before, those sorts of things. Put, put my stock in some sort of exercise routine or, or some kind of goal like that, and then it all comes crashing down. One of uh, a, a great author who's now passed away that I respect, David Pallison, says somewhere, a perfect recipe for anxiety is putting your hope in something that you can lose. A perfect recipe for anxiety is putting your hope in something that you can lose. So what has your experience been like with self-hope? I've shared some of mine. What's your experience been like? If you're a follower of Christ, have you tried out that path? If you're not a follower of Christ today, is that your path? Is that what you believe? That you think that you can determine and accomplish what you truly and most deeply desire in life? If that's you, I invite, I'm so glad you're listening, and I invite you to continue listening as we talk about how Christian hope is something entirely different. But Christian hope is also something that's entirely different than religious hope. And so religious hope is something that is also a counterfeit hope, and it's something that the psalmist also, in Psalm 44, acknowledges and, and sees it as a way that we try to move forward when our soul feels cast down, but like self-hope, Religious hope is also a dead end. It's not a true solution. In Psalm 44, 20 through 21, the psalmist says this. He says, If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Now listen, 22. Yet for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Once again, this is not a path only for deists and pantheists. It's to, tra to travel. But also Christians can and do try it out as well. The psalmist is saying that this was a real temptation for them when things were not going right, when it seemed like God wasn't responding to or improving their circumstances. They were tempted to look elsewhere, to look at another higher will, another higher power to bring about the improvement, to bring about the redemption, the resolution that they were seeking. And he is saying that since they have been faithful, he says there at the end, since we haven't done these things, why, why are we, why is it the case that we're being killed all the day long? Why are we regarded as sheep to be slaughtered? Their faithfulness, get this, this is what he says, yet for your sake, so their faithfulness to God, to Yahweh, get ready, has caused this hardship. So let me talk about my, my experience with this. If I'm experienced in self-hope, then I'm an expert in religious hope. I've always, here's some examples. I've always read my Bible and prayed very religiously during any finals week in my entire life, as long as I can remember. What am I doing with that? Why am I doing that? It's because I'm trying to present to God my obedience, seeking to encourage him to show me favor during finals week. I've also made sure to give God the credit for any of the successes and I've had some in my life. And it's as if to say, hey God, you know, if you give me success, I'm gonna give you the credit. So it's a good deal, God. Make me successful, you get the credit. With a nice little negotiation here. This is gonna be just fine. What's another way? Well, I've also gotten upset, not actually at God, but mainly at myself when things haven't gone my way. And in my mind, I'm saying things like, I wasn't good enough, or I must have made a mistake, or I wasn't loving it enough. People have told me my whole life, you're too hard on yourself. Why am I so hard on myself? Because I expect that my performance is going to yield a good reward. And if I don't have that good reward, if I don't have that life of ease and comfort and success, then I say, what is wrong with me? 
because something that I've done has displeased God and somehow I am some outside of his favor. That's the kind of math, that's the kind of thinking that can so easily go through my head, can go through our heads. This is religious hope that somehow we can manipulate, maneuver and coerce God's will to bless us. That's not how God works. So what's left besides self-hope and religious hope? It's Christian hope. It's something different entirely. It's not manipulating those around us or trying to manipulate those above us in order to lift up our cast down soul. You know, that, you know, let me just say this. You know, one of the terrible things about self and religious hope, it's this, is that the relationships in your life now just become means to your own ends. So if you look at your life and the people around you are really just tools in your hands to get what you want, then that might be an indicator to you that you're walking down the path of either self or religious hope. But there is, by God's grace, truly by God's grace, there is an alternative. There's something beyond these counterfeit hopes. There is a hope in the Christian God who has all the power, who has all the faithfulness, and who has given us all the love, all the significance that we've been looking for. So let's finally turn to talking about Christian hope. And once again, we see these amazing passages in verse 5 and 11 of chapter 42. I'll just read it. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Here's the solution. Hope in God, we say to our souls. Hope in God. For because I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. So I want to close our time by looking at those three phrases. Hope in God, my salvation, and my God. So let's start with hope in God. This is, note, not hope in a God, but hope in God himself. It's not, it's not either hope in what God can do for you. It's hope in who he is. It's hope in what he's like. It's hope in how he works. It's hope in the kind of God that he is. When our soul is cast down, when we are in despair, when we are adrift at sea, God himself is our anchor. He has the power. He has the faithfulness. He has the love for us that we need. His faithfulness to us as Christians is not based on our own doing. It's not a religious hope, but it's based on Christ's doing. God who is Father, Son, and Spirit, they have always been committed above all else to their glory, even from before creation was. The Father's delight has been and forever will be in His Son, Jesus. And we enter into that faithful delight of the Father through His Son, through Jesus Christ. We can know that God is for us because he is for his son and we are united to his son by faith. So that when the father looks at us, he doesn't look at us waiting for our performance, but he looks at us united to the performance of his son, united to Jesus, united to his delight. And so when he looks at us, when he looks at me, when he looks at you, if you have faith in Jesus, his delight for you, is his delight in his son because you're united to his son by faith. This is how he has become our hope. He's become our hope. So how can we know that in our darkest hour, when our soul is cast down, how can we know that God is for us even in that place? Ultimately, the answer is because there was another soul that was cast down that was cast all the way down. And that was the soul of Jesus Christ himself. And this is how Jesus became our salvation. So let's talk about my, that, that phrase, my salvation. The only other place in the Bible where a soul is spoken of as being cast down, as being sorrowful even unto death, 
is the soul of Jesus as he contemplated and approached his betrayal and crucifixion. We find it, one, one of those is in Matthew 26, 38, where Jesus says, Jesus said to them, this is in the Garden of Gethsemane, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. He says, Jesus said, my soul is sorrowful even to death. My soul is cast down. Remain here with me, disciples. Also in John 12, Jesus says, Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. What hour? This hour of betrayal. This hour of his crucifixion. This hour of his death. But, Jesus says, for this purpose, I have come to this hour. This is an hour of death, but it's also an hour of redemption. This God... This God, this Christian God made a way for you, made a way for me to enter into his joy forever. But it cost his son, Jesus, so dearly. His soul was utterly cast down. No one picked it up. It was left there. It was trampled. It was cast down to death. That taunt, hey, where is your God that we read in verse 11 of Psalm 42? Jesus heard that on the cross. Oh, if God is pleased with you, call out to him and he'll bring you down. Yet for this purpose he came. Jesus was born to die for us. He is faithful despite his, he remained faithful despite his utter rejection, despite his emotional, verbal, physical, and relational pain. Jesus never wavered. He never turned back from that path, from that dreadful and deadly path. He walked right into the pit of death for us. Jesus tasted that hopeless, that hellish sorrow so that we wouldn't have to taste it, so that he could be our salvation, so that we could be his forever, so that we could have a living hope, as Peter says, through his resurrection from the dead. This is how God is our salvation. It's because there was a soul that was cast down so that when our souls are cast down, we can be lifted up so that Jesus can know what it feels like to have our souls cast down so that he can say, yes, you've been cast down, but oh, I've been cast all the way down and I have saved you from that. Is he your hope today? Do you know him? You didn't do anything to deserve this from him. He's everything you want and more. Finally, my God, through Jesus, this God, he has become our God. He's my God. He's your God. We are his and he is ours. We belong to God. We are his children whom he loves so dearly. And we get God forever. We shall again praise him. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. We shall again praise him despite 2020, despite what comes in 2021. This Christian hope, it can and it will withstand all things because our connection to God in Jesus, it will withstand all things. As much as we can, and we should long for changing of circumstances, the ceasing of pain, and the end of our sorrows. As long as we can and should long for those things, we can know that none of those things can actually separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You remember those verses that I referenced earlier from Psalm 44 where it says, Yet for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Do you remember those from Psalm 44? Well, listen to them now being quoted by Paul in, in Romans chapter 8. Hear, hear them now in Paul's words in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall famine, shall danger, shall nakedness, or distress, or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. Hear those words. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered, says Paul, quoting Psalm 44, which we just read. No, says Paul, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation, 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, friends, will be able to separate us from our God, from our joy, from our glory, from our hope. Let's pray. Father God, you are our hope. You are the one who has said to us, yes, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You are the one who has said to us that yes, we can be sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. You are the one who says that these afflictions of this world, they are light and momentary when compared to the eternal weight of glory that is ours in Christ Jesus. We have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There is a God-man currently seated, having completed his work up in the heavens, soon to return, soon to rule all, soon to be with us forever. He is our living hope that even when our souls are cast down, even when death comes, we can know that we shall live because our Savior lives. And so as we approach 2021, may our hope be in you, our God, in you, not in what you might do for us this year, but in what you've done for us already, in who you are, in your character, in your affection for us, that your heart for us does not change, does not change in Christ. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness to us. It's what we've been looking for. We pray that we would treasure it, be upheld by it, and share the good news of it with all those around us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks for worshiping with us this morning. I want to invite you to stand now as we prepare to say our benediction together. And I pray that as you say this, you would believe it. <laughs> that you would feel that gladness in God. Let's say it together. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Thanks for worshiping with us. We'll see you again soon.